Okay, so that little glance at Mary Berkeley's will gives a nice um, introduction to the other things I'm going to go into. And I guess I'll just take us for a little little tour of the people that are around Dr. Charles Morton and his life. Okay, so starting out, here's a Henry Cornwall that married Mary Cornwall. That was these are the parents of Mary Berkeley. Now I did um who married Dr. Charles Morton. I did if I can now find him, I have a whole pile in my hand. Did go ahead and retrieve Henry Berkeley's will to see a couple things of interest. Now, why on earth would I do that? After all, she outlived him, and he would know to call her Elizabeth uh, Mary Morton. If indeed she styled herself as such, I think she probably would. But you know, her uncle was a titled individual. You know, but. Then again, Mary Berkeley didn't call herself uh, Mary Germain, did she? No, she didn't. Okay, so here is Henry Berkeley's will. This is the father of Mary Berkeley. Now, apparently, and I guess I have to go into some background, but I'll bring that up a little bit later. Basically, and let's just get into a little bit uh, some of the situation here. So, Mary, Henry Berkeley died. May of 1736. It's, it's reported. I don't remember where I got that from, but I got it from somewhere at least close to authoritative. The least authoritative source I would have for that is Wikipedia. <laughs> but I do have a I do have a a um, a will here, and in fact, it probably he probably died May 1735. <laughs> it's dated. Uh, 1735, so well, I guess maybe I should say that's my authority. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the dates over here in Linux because Family Tree Maker isn't behaving. If I change one thing, it all crashes down. So, Linux folks, I'm losing my functionality. Get on it. <laughs> Otherwise, I may have to use something else. Or maybe I'll just stick with Windows. I'm trying. But let's get back to this. Okay, um... As far as I know, the best evidence shows, the best evidence that I have or been able to find or as much effort as I've put in, Henry Berkeley died uh, May 1736. His wife died in 1741. Meanwhile, the daughter, Mary Berkeley, married Charles Morton in 1744. That was three years after her mother died. Okay. Now, um, let's get back up to this. Let's get to him. Okay, so now I was I was pondering. Okay, we don't know anything about Dr. Charles Morton's background, and at the end of his life, he bequests three major assets. One is are his lands in Ireland. The other uh, major asset he bequests is his place at Twickenham, and his third major place is his apartment at the London Museum. No, no, sorry, his property in Westmoreland. He was allowed to live at the museum. He also had an apartment in the museum he was allowed to live at for the entirety of his life, I, I suppose. He, you know, he ended up that way. Um, but he, he wasn't able to bequest that, but instead the property of Twickingham. Now, he got that property one of three ways. Either through the money he earned in life, two, he got it from, um, he inherited it from his his own family, or three, he got it from, by, due to the fact he married one of his three wives that we know of. And um, I say we know of because there is a room for possibility, although I don't find it very likely given the fact that Charles Carr was originally Charles Carr and had the last name Carr. Um, I actually, I'm starting to think I don't find it likely he would have had a fourth wife. We know of three wives that were mentioned in, uh, that I have evidence for besides what's already, you know, any person can read just in his biographical, you know, they're going to see all three names. 
Mary Pratt, Elizabeth Pratt, and Mary Berkeley, all, all those are all birth names. Um, <coughs> so now I'm going to try to see, well, what did Mary Berkeley, but with, with the evidence I have, you know, if I had a, um, if I was, a, was able to see an indenture uh, contract agreement prior to Dr. Charles Morton's marriage to Mary Berkeley, um, that would probably be a better thing to look at to see what he actually got from her. But indirectly, I could see, well, Mary Berkeley was, uh, at the time when she got married, <coughs> having been born in 1716, uh, she would have been 28 years old. So, um, those, you know, it's highly unlikely that she, she herself at the age of 28 had built up a fortune at, the, at that time <laughs> on her own on her own accord so it would, so now we're looking for well maybe wealth passed from her parents to her and then to Charles Morton that would explain some of the wealth that he had if we can't explain the wealth that he had that the only conclusion we can draw at the end of the day is that the wealth was either earned by him or he inherited that wealth from somebody else algebraic works the other way too so it's not necessarily incorrect to assume that the you know that um, what is you know it's a piece of the puzzle that we're figuring out here it's not incorrect to um, I don't know how to explain that it seems incorrect if I just look at Mary Belt Berkeley's wealth ignore Dr. Charles Morton's, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to look at the whole thing. It's the best way I can explain it. Um, try to see how these uh, funds flowed to the individuals in their lifetime and raised various possibilities for it. Okay, so now look, let's look at Henry Berkman's will. Now, in the beginning there, he, he basically gives his soul, he bequests his soul to God, as a lot of people commonly did, actually, in the New World, a hundred years prior to this. Now, um, okay, then he goes, he basically gives everything to his dear wife, Mary, Berkeley, the daughter of uh, Colonel Henry Cornwall. Mary Cornwall, Henry Cornwall. And then and then he has some annuities among all of such child and children of, of Henry Berkeley and of the said Mary Berkeley, the dear wife, and during all the rest and residue which I okay, until such time as they died. And if they all died, he would give all that money to his brother, George Berkeley. It's the best I could fish out of this chicken scratch. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen better, clear writing come out of the colonies, in better condition than this. But that's it. So basically, he writes his will. This will was written in 1712, and hadn't been updated at all. <laughs> Okay, so then he ended up dying, and then when his, um, now the question is, did I go and I get Mary Berkeley's will in 1741? And I'm not so sure that I did, and I'm not sure, sure if I was able to find one either. 
Okay. Basically, in general, it goes to his children while they're alive. Once they die, then it would end up going to um, his brother George, who was married to Henrietta, the Count Countess of Suffolk. So here is George. Here's Henrietta Howard, who became the Countess of Suffolk. And give a little back background on Henrietta Howard, Countess of Suffolk. Henrietta Howard ended up um, becoming Lady of the Bedchamber of... Um, King George the first or second, one of the two. I think it might have been King George the second. And um, there was some Horace Walpole wrote down some implications that she was mother to George the second. I think so. It might have been that there there was implication that she had an affair with George the first. Now 